How's it going? Uh huh. Thanks. Damn. Hi, dogs. Hi. <laughs> it's gorgeous in here. Thanks. Thank you. How are you? Good. <laughs> hey, folks. Cornelius Van Gogh here, and I'm chilling at my friend's place. This is Ryan, and this is Jesse. Hello. And they've got a beautiful home here. There's a third member of their crew uh, who is Peter. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And he is at Walmart working. Yeah, he's about to be on his way home, but that takes about half an hour. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's got a real job. He's a real yeah. job, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we're super lucky he does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of work that you guys are doing here. Uh, in the place in general, yeah, yeah, a lot of, uh, but most of that is free stuff. Like, we don't, we don't put a lot of money or, or anything into, uh, into the materials of this place too often, you know? Occasionally. Like batteries but, and things yeah. like that. But oh, if we could do it free or super cheap, that's how mm -hmm. we do it. And then that way our money that we do have goes towards making sure we're fed and the animals and stuff are fed because we take in a lot of animals and so we're working for them. Uh, don't mind this, this is part of our bug catcher. We often have a, a thing here that'll collect the moths, and so all the moths will fly in that, and we get to see what types of bugs are here. And then uh, in the morning, we feed them to the chickens. So it's kind of like bug bug management system. How does it work? They just the lights right above it, and so they're always yeah, flying so they here anyway. Slide on. Uh huh. And then so they just kind of land inside the cone, and then there's a bottle here that collects them further, and then they oh. can't fly back out. These are the little ones. Plus, she's kind of bigger, but uh, the rooster in the other coop wanted to beat her up, so I just moved her into this one. It's like a really, it's a chess game of chicken socialization. Mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, you hate this one and you hate that one, so if I move you over here, uh, you know, it's all about keeping them safe because they're savage and they'll just tear each other up. Like, if a chicken spots blood, there's some eggs. Oh, nice. But like there'll be three in there, nothing here, nothing here. And then this one here is such a good mom. I pet her to kind of make her leave sometimes because she'll sit here for hours, not eat, not drink. She's like, no, I just want to sit on eggs. And so eventually I have to reach underneath and steal the eggs because uh, she'll get hungry enough that she'll eat one hmm. so that she can protect the others. She'll eat one egg. Um, and then once they get the taste of yolk, it's over. And then the ducks. They're cool because hey. uh, they don't really fight all that much. Like a duck fight is really mellow, um, except there's a baby gate there currently blocking the other side. I had to divide it. We we ended up with another male duck that looks like a mallard, but he's like much bigger, and he likes the ladies of these ducks. And Carl doesn't like that, and so all day long it's just them chasing each other around because it's springtime, and it's stressful. So now we've like cordoned it off and we switch them sides every once in a while and we give them turns in the pond. And so you guys are managed now so that you're not screaming and hollering. <laughs> yeah, it's apparently springtime is just stressful with farm animals. They're all doing their yucky farm animal stuff and it's like just kind of part of how it is. But if we can, we like to give some of them a break from harassment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the tortoises. The male tortoise just bites at the female's legs all day and then bobs his head. So sometimes we go, okay, you're going back home and we just let her roam the yard by herself and she can just kind of stretch out and do her own thing. Uh, so this way we have the, which was originally just the dog yard, which was now being turned into kind of a multi-animal chill zone. <laughs> So we're shading it the best we can and, and out further and further and further. And then in here we have the tortoises. And so now we can close this gate and we let the tortoises out and they roam this spot. And in the winter it's all grass. So they chew on the grass and then they just wander back into here and pass out. And then we can open the door again and then the dogs also get the yard. So we just like divide their time. But uh, the tortoises are in here. Stay out there, Nuki. Yeah. Oh, hi. <laughs> so it's Bob and Apples. Hi, Bob and Apples. You're so cute. Yeah. Apples is the female that's down there. And then that's Bob. Bob has green eyes. So you can Whoa. see his eyes from like a mile away. 
But uh, he does that with his head. He bobs his head. Hi. And Apples loves apples, so that's their, <laughs> their naming Cute. Thing. But I think she's about to lay eggs because she's digging a hole down there. And, and they've been in springtime mating mode, so. Whoa. Eventually, we're gonna have little tiny tortoises popping out of here. And wow. We just feed them out of our garden. Just take greens that we can snip out of the garden, fill this thing up every day, cut up an apple or so, throw it on there. Mm -hmm. uh, flowers that have been past their prime. And even uh, cactus, like the brand new paddles on cactus, they can eat those too. Uh -huh. So I'm planting some in here so that as they grow, they can just, I can just cut paddles off and drop it on them, you know? This is, our favorite, this is the best part. This is yeah. our favorite spot. We just hang out over here. I was instantly drawn to that yeah. spot. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's the sound, right? You got all the dripping water. Uh, we have chains on a lot of the outlets here so that the water doesn't just hit and then splash. Because right. like, if you were to take that chain off, you know, the odd droplet would hit here and you don't think much of it. But over the course of days, you actually lose gallons of water. So. It's, uh, it's not quite a dragonfly, but a damselfly is about to land on that chair there. They start to breed in here, and they're predators, so they hunt the flies, the house flies, midair. So now predators are coming in here and breeding in our pond, and then spreading out from there and killing off all the house flies. So like midsummer awesome. in here is pretty good. Our compost is full of flies, mm -hmm. but in here there's barely anything. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. a relief because like to just sit there and just have flies just landing on your face like. It's the worst. It's, it's yeah. All these come from different spots, but the water goes up through the whole place and loops back around into there. And one of them comes from a swirl filter. The other one comes from some aquaponics in there. The third one comes from our evaporative cooler, which we just, actually that, that's new. That's, that can be your exclusive content. Like, Ooh. Ain't, ain't nobody seen this thing yet. Like, we haven't even made a video on it. And we took an old evaporative cooler body uh -huh. uh, that was all flamed up and built a duct in the back out of aluminum siding and then this is like an old army camp mat for insulation and then took uh, from the back of a refrigerator the grate cut it in half and made those mesh pieces and then there's evaporative cooler pads in that and so our pond runs up here and these two little tubes keep those pads wet and then this tube will go to a thingy on the window with a fan and cool our house Fucking brilliant, dude. So, it was an air conditioner there, but that thing was like 500 watts and we couldn't run it at night. So this thing here just needs the pond to be running and a small 12 volt fan. And fingers crossed, we can sleep inside this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's, our, it's our botanical art palace, is what we like to call it. Yeah. Right, oh yeah, we do have a garden, don't we? Yeah, that's the best part and I forgot about it. <coughs> I mean, that's part of the outside. Uh, no, that's true. <coughs> yeah, so this is the front entrance right from here that we kind of want to eventually funnel traffic through. Um, this was all bushes and scrub, and, and some of the, the ones that were here are still here, like this one is pruned back, and then the creosote we left in. But then everything else we added, all the aloe and mesquite trees and ash. And oh snap, this cactus just flowered. That opened in the last hour. Ooh. It wasn't open when I walked by here watering stuff earlier. I gotta I smell it. That, yeah. We have a, a cactus that bloomed only at night. I think it was that one. It opened up a huge white flower for one night and then just you know, died off. Trippy. Yeah, they're really cool. But uh, this whole garden is going to be shaded further, so watch your head because it's kind of flopping down. Rain made it heavy and it all sagged, so it's it's getting fixed up. But it's all date palm fronds, and these are what like the dates grow on, and they kind of hang down from the tree. And then when that hardens, it makes like little arches and stuff. And we've arched it all up. We got a lime tree around the corner, date palm, fan palm, a lot of cactus. Um, Things. Yeah. And then the, uh, this green strapping that was inside there also extends now out over this whole garden. And those are all shipping straps from the solar farm up the road mm -hmm. that have been blowing around the slabs for like six years and the sun hasn't degraded them. So like, well, hang on now. <laughs> so Peter did the, the, 
the uh, the gigantic task of weaving all of these things together. Put them all one direction and then just started weaving from that side and made it all the way to here. And like, you think it would take years, but like, no, he just comes out here and goes at it a little bit and the next thing you know, it was done. Like, for a while there, little pieces are hanging down in between before it's finished and it becomes more of a jungle and you have to like, climb through all the green straps to, to water the plants. But uh, this is real good now because it lets through a little bit of light but not too much where it's gonna burn the leaves. Mm, pomegranate and more tomatoes. A lot of tomato this time, because uh, last year we grew a couple in this spot. Well, I think we ate like two tomatoes. <laughs> that was useless. So now we got like 15 tomato plants so that we don't have any shortage of them. Uh, sugar cane here, and there's tobacco plants and weed plants that people keep giving us because they're leaving Slab City and like, oh, I've been growing this, please, please <laughs> take it to fruition. It's like, all right, so we stick it in the garden. Uh, got a lot of herbs back here and corn and parsley. We eat a lot of parsley, fresh parsley. So what we made like, for us. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. These things get humongous and the flowers look like um, fireworks. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. And the sunflowers are actually from bird seed we, that we've been mixing in with the bird food. So we're like, well, I mean, do these grow? So I just put a bunch of sunflower seeds everywhere and now we have a bunch of them. So each sunflower seed just made me another hundred sunflower seeds. The pump here, if I just manually spin this valve. Oh, neat. So yeah, those are the little misters. I might move that upper one there, but it, it wets them a little bit. And then what it more importantly does is wet the ground. Because then afterwards they'll just dig little holes in the mud and keep cool that way. So yeah, that's that. And that all ran off of this little pump here. This guy here is pulling water from our duckweed thing. Nice. A little filter and then it goes to that valve which is controlled by a thing in the back. And so whenever I tell it to go, it'll operate that. Cool. It's, yeah, it's, and we're adding more tanks here to hold more water. So once these two, this one's getting replaced with a slightly deeper tank, and then this is all getting linked together. So when all is said and done, we'll have about a thousand gallon storage for the pond system and the irrigation, and then another like 300 for. There's a hummingbird on the aloe out there. Oh, I don't know if you get it, I but see that, it. maybe. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My we'll camera. on that later. My camera doesn't zoom. Ah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, did you dig those uh, pits by hand? Uh, Peter actually dug the entire big one right there. By wow. The, yeah. the other one, I think we teamed up on a little bit, but mostly Peter's like shovel master. Like I can do a lot of physical tasks, but shoveling is not one of them. Like I, I dig a hole, I'm halfway through, and I'm like taking breaks. <laughs> But he can just go, 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 go. It took him no time to dig that hole. But um, in this direction is like currently not being utilized very well. But it's like art storage we've been putting in here. Uh, the shelves kind of collapsed. So we're going to empty all this out and kind of rebuild it in better. But we collect a lot of stuff out of the piles in the desert and then like take broken glass and categorize it by color and clean them off and, and put them in jars so that when we go to do an art project we can be like all right i need some rosary beads and green glass got them <laughs> you know, like, so we just trying to come up with a better system to now store all that stuff so we just have like this art encyclopedia that we can just reach from uh, books and books and books and maps and all that thrift art that Jesse was talking about that she's been collecting, we still have stored in some of these storage boxes. Yeah, this is going to be our outdoor kitchen. It is not yet. Yeah. Uh, this is a little living room where we can hang out. Um, yeah, it's got a floor that's raised up off the ground and then the whole thing we want to mesh in so that the flies kind of can't get in there. Mm -hmm. And we'll cool it and uh, hopefully be able to cook outside in the summer because cooking inside didn't work. <laughs> Which I'm sure you're familiar with. Summertime cooking just does not happen. These walls are made out of old beehives, old bee boxes. And we got more and we want to make them come all the way up to the center, kind of like in a peak, like an archway. And then have it so like when you walk in, you kind of come through this arch of bee boxes and the art that's in the sides will kind of continue up into here. So some of them will be little windows and other ones will have stuff dangling down. And, and then the whole thing has some vines planted near it now. So snail vine, or was it, was it snail or shrimp? 
snail. snail. <laughs> we have a shrimp plant and a snail vine. This is like, now you're getting into more of where like Jesse's artistic endeavors are able to take hold because like there hasn't been walls for the longest time. It's just been a bunch of posts mm -hmm. inside here. So there's only so much you can hang on a post. Yeah. Yeah. But all the bee boxes act mm -hmm. as, as small spaces to, to do vignettes and, and, and. Yeah. The books are all mine. The art's all mine. Yeah, it's all thrift store collected for decades. Mm -hmm. Like we sell the eggs from the birds that we rescue. Mm -hmm. And so they are at least like at best no, feeding I themselves. Buy some before I go. I was just gonna give you some. Oh, we got it's yeah. springtime. They're just like got firing eggs, eggs out. You can't talk about making ends meet and then not let me pay for <laughs> yeah, eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's how we get you hooked, right? So you're gonna uh -huh. try the eggs and be like, oh man, I need more. I ate them all today. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. yeah. So it'll happen. You are um, so little. Yeah, she's a yeah, sweetie. Yeah, my little slab princess. You're a needy little <laughs> She's a thing. sweetie, yeah. a needy sweetie. A needy sweetie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I only give rough pets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, the eggs actually help out a lot. And then uh, we're doing a bed and breakfast that we're working on. And cool. so not just like an Airbnb, but like, no, a head and breakfast. Like, like micro. Yeah, yeah, micro farm stay kind of. Cool. Uh, it's a miniature version of this essentially that has plants and automation and, and water and, and things happening. Uh, it's going to be cool. It's got Wi-Fi, power, water, outdoor kitchen. And then in the morning, there's like a loaf of fresh bread and like half a dozen eggs and some tomatoes and shit from the garden and just like trying to make it quaint AF. Nice. That's what we're going for. Yeah, like rabbit side, quaint AF. <laughs> Jeez, I'm keeps, quite keeps impressed. On evolving too. Mm -hmm. Now that it can run that evaporative cooler, I'm just hoping it keeps it wet enough to cool us. Can you do it? Yeah. Yeah, it's just, <coughs> everything changes a lot. Yeah. So, how long have you guys been here? In this spot what is a a year last January so a year and a we're coming now we're working towards a year and a half yeah, we're working towards yeah a year and a half in this spot but mm -hmm. been coming to the slabs uh, for now six years I think like six five, and five years respectively. Rest. yeah uh, but only in the winter season and then traveling around in the summers mm. But you stayed here last summer. Yes, mm -hmm. last summer was our first summer here. Um, yeah, because we were tired of not owning plants or books or art supplies or yeah. to live in a hallway and drive around is fun to see America, but to be an yeah. artist or a reader or, or have a, rock a botanist, collection. Or, yeah, it's, yeah, it sucks. So we just wanted to we wanted to kind of have our stuff and be able to make art and do the things we wanted to do and not have to worry about the space of a of a trailer to just have to support that in. So. This thing's loud as mm hell. -hmm. No. Don't worry about him. Bigger idea. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> we got to build a fort and live in it. Mm -hmm. right, so you can't do that on the road. Well, I had a very pleasant time with you. Yes, absolutely. Yes, as well. Yeah, uh, I'll come by and say, hey, what's up again sometime. Yeah, and, and well, library is one of the few camps that we do go by. <laughs> That's right. Well, you're welcome anytime. <laughs>